People are now thinking about what sort of behaviours do we need to promote in society more broadly. And that's in itself a very creative process because citizens will follow when they're absolutely clear as to why they're being asked to do something. And for me that makes it far easier for companies, for creators, for designers to bring forward new products and services that will meet those expectations, those rising expectations. We run a design and branding agency called Elenco. We are what's called a B Corp. A B Corp stands for B Corporation and it's a movement that came out of the US based on trying to transform the way businesses think and it's about changing the way businesses are set up so that it's no longer about profit trumping all else. It's fine to make money, but it's also doing it in the right way. So it's about profit, it's about people, and it's about the planet. We can use creativity to change behavior in a number of ways. One of those is through design. So again, having beautiful products is a way to get people to buy into a brand and to buy into a sustainable way of living without necessarily having to think about it at first and then later on can really you know, get surprised and delighted by the fact that their product uses plant-based ingredients and has 100% recycled plastic, etc. We still have a resource economy that consists on getting it out of the earth, making stuff and chucking stuff away. That's basically the number of it. And the alignment now, which is to get this circular flow of resources, materials, value, in a completely different way. That is tantamount to a complete revolution. So I think one of the ways that we can change the education system is to inspire young people to take on creative challenges that are around climate issues and around the circular economy. And the organisation that, that we support and work with very closely is Creative Conscience. Creative Conscience was set up by a community to encourage, reward and support the next generation of creative thinkers to use their talent for social and environmental impact. We know that we can positively change our world through creative thinking and we have hundreds of examples that prove that. My name is Lily Dryden and I'm a graphic designer. Me and my creative partner, Georgia Lashley, started looking at video games and how there's such a big audience of people there that could really listen to what you had to say. And then we found an issue such as climate change and we brought the two together. We created a short film. We also then created sort of content to bring out to a protest such as banners that all entwined together to raise awareness for climate change. Game over. It was called Obligation. I think that creativity allows people to talk about things in a language that they can understand. My creativity allowed me to talk to a group of people in a way that they listened. I think if the world uses more creative means to communicate things, it will create bigger listeners, bigger communities, and a stronger way to solve these problems. We, yeah, towards the end of the project, had this sort of sense of empowerment. It mattered because now there's lots of conversations around climate change and it can feel overwhelming and I think it was important to make sure that other people in that position felt like they had a sort of way to express themselves or sort of a means to not feel the way that we did. Um, my name is Ian Lewis and um, I am a graphic designer and creative and I work sort of in the film and animation industry. Um, so my creative partner and I, um, who's called George Warren, um, made a short film 
um, in the summer last year called Yuki. Um, the film follows an Inuit and his dog and their sort of relationship and their struggle after the devastating horse village. The Alaskan spillage sort of takes reference from an Exxon spillage that happened in 1989, I think it was. Um, and when we made the film, uh, we wanted to sort of draw as much sort of reference and influence from that event um, to try and bring some truth from the past, but also put our own spin on it. Making this film was a really big challenge but also like really rewarding and I think that um, even though that the actual process of stop motion is like incredibly slow and tedious like now I think when we watch the film and sort of like get to sort of see how it all came together and people have actually watched it and taken something away from that and, and I think the fact that we sort of made something that started off as such a small project and people have actually taken a positive message from that is like very rewarding. Uh, making an environmental impactful film made both myself and George feel quite empowered um, and I think the idea that people can watch it and actually take something away from that is like a really important part of our creative output. Creative Conscience has inspired thousands of young people from all around the world to use their talent to create change. We've had thousands and thousands of projects over the years from over 65 nationalities. Every single project that's been sent our way has been about social and environmental impact. For Equiver, we have a motto that's kind of progress, not perfection, and I think that really helps. So, for example, we've recently launched a new product that uses waste from the brewery industry um, as an input into our washing up liquid. We found that the fastest growing product is non-alcoholic beer. So what we do is we use the leftover alcohol um, as an ingredient in, in the product. Um, the packaging as well is sustainable. Um, we have 100% of the plastic uh, of the bottle is actually from post-consumer recycled content and 50% of the cap So an example of how design can create positive change around the circular economy, we have just taken on a project which we launched in September at the UN Climate Change Conference. It was called the G9 Arc, and it's effectively a carbon trading scheme which allows consumers to relate their spending behaviour to the regeneration of different landscapes in other parts of the world. We need to inspire and engage the public and the next generation into thinking about how they consume, what they consume and why they consume it. We've got a broken system, but if we get people to understand that they have a choice in what they buy, how much they buy, and get them to actually question whether they need what they buy, then we can change the way that we are currently moving. I'm creating a truly circular product, I have to believe that that's possible because if it's not possible, I think that we're, you know, we're facing some truly unprecedented challenges and it's going to be quite difficult to kind of get us to where we need to be um, without truly circular products. I don't like romanticizing this. A lot of behaviour change will only come about because people are going to be made to do stuff. Sorry, it's not a fashionable thing to say. But if we leave it all to people voluntarily to find their own sort of long-winded way,
to a more sustainable pattern of consumption. It could easily be too late. So do what we can to work with consumer interest, but be prepared to intervene in those markets to change behaviour by legislation. So how can B Corporations help with the climate crisis? Well, I think businesses have to take the lead. I think we've seen over the last few years that change is not going to come from governments and it's going to come from the people who have the money and the people who have the money are the corporations. And I think it's time for businesses to step up and take responsibility. And they have the power, they have the means and they can make the choices to do things differently. And I think that's really what the B Corp movement is about. It's about changing the way we work. We believe that individualism is destroying our societies and worse still, our planet. We need to look at joining forces and building communities at local level to change the way things aren't working with our current broken system. It's interesting for me that everybody talks about the private sector being the element that will make the circular economy come about. I don't really subscribe to that. I think it's governments. Governments can regulate to stop the bad stuff. They can incentivize things to make the good stuff happen. They can set standards for appliances, for buildings, for materials. They create the envelope in which all designers and creative people can then make their way in the circular, sustainable economy. Without governments, you can forget it.